Hey everyone, it's the latest uh, Never Seen Halloween. Uh, this one was actually pretty special because, uh, first of all, it's considered a Disney classic, and yet uh, last night was the very first time I ever saw it. Uh, I actually have seen like a couple of clips now and again growing up, but it was just one of those movies that, for whatever reason, I didn't, either I didn't get into at the time, or I don't recall seeing the whole entire thing, and that is Disney's Bed Knobs and Broomsticks. Yeah, really, I have never seen this uh, film before. I, I've, I've I've always heard of it, and considering I do like An Angela Lansbury and uh, David Tom Tomlinson, uh, who was he's best known for uh, Mary Poppins. Uh, I also liked him as the villain in uh, uh, the Love Bug, uh, the classic one with Dean Jones. Um, but really, what I have to say about this film is actually that. It is actually an interesting uh, kind of Halloween pick that doesn't usually get up there. And I've got like another one that I haven't talked about uh, yet on this channel that I may do for the next video. Uh, more of a film fan theory. But uh, for anyone that doesn't know, it's about this uh, witch in training that's like learning magic from like a uh, like, uh, correspondence, like a... Uh, Pretty much what you would do for, like, uh, if you ever saw, like, one of those ads for, like, uh, art class lessons or something like that. Uh, but she's learning magic from it. Uh, she ends up taking in three kids from London that are escaping the Blitz. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, her latest uh, spell hasn't come in the mail yet because the uh, college is officially closed. So she has to go find the professor... Uh, that uh, was sending her all this magic. And it turns out he's pretty much a sham artist. He's pretty much a, a, a sideshow salesman uh, kind of type. Uh, but sh he does have like an important spell that she thinks is going to end the war. Uh, so they go on the hunt for the spell uh, with each other and the kids uh, on that magic bed that like everybody knows from the from the posters and everything like that. Um, the only real, uh, thing I remember from th this particular movie growing up is mainly just, like, two clips. One is, uh, the, uh, underwater scene, uh, where, uh, David Thomason and Angela Lansbury are dancing and singing and stuff like that. I remember that, and then I remember the first time she turns one of the kids into a rabbit. So, uh... Those are like the big things that I remember the most about this uh, particular movie. And it's it's actually surprising uh, that I never saw this movie. It has a lot of stuff that I loved about classic Disney. So um, one thing I think is particular, particularly interesting is that this feels like a more uh, laid back kind of story. Even though it's a little bit of a war epic, it's a little bit of a fantasy um, I'm actually surprised they didn't go more places. For for what I understand, I almost felt like there was like more destinations. Like this was more like a trip around the world or something like that. So they only go to like uh, three different places uh, over, overall. Uh, the animation uh, that uh, uh, that was used for like uh, Mary Poppins, it, I think it's better used here because it's a plot point and it actually gets a lot more entertainment out of, like, the animation in a lot of ways. I think too much of the animation in both Mary Poppins and Mary Poppins Returns uh, kind of has, like, too much of a uh, show-stopping, like, we're just going to check out some cartoons here. It didn't really have anything really to do with one way or the other, uh, which isn't bad. I still particularly love that uh, we had that element. Uh, Angela Lansbury, as usual, is awesome, and David Tomlinson, I was already a fan of his from, like, uh, Mary Poppins and The Love Bug, as I mentioned. This may be my favorite role of his, because I kind of love that he's still kind of like the, uh, uh, he, it's kind of like if you took, uh, Mr. Banks and gave him the part of Bert, but really didn't change the character that much, uh, because he, he's still, like, got the scowl and everything like that. Uh, like Mr. Banks has, but he's also like a little more of a trickster uh, as it goes along. And uh, but I do like that he's not—he's not too vicious. He's just like 
that like okay obviously uh, i gotta do this because uh the war's going on and everything like that and he he doesn't make as much trouble as i expected he would uh considering his uh considering his uh way in life and i actually love this idea that like uh he's been giving her fake magic that is actually real uh because we find out he took it all from like an old spell book so uh uh, what else do I have to say about this? I especially love the ending. I I love this whole like, almost like uh, Lord of the Rings meets a uh, Army of Darkness, but like how Disney did it in like the '60s. So I'm kind of like, I like the atmosphere of that. I kind of like that, even though yes, it's weird. It's it, there are Nazis in this movie, and I hear people that have talked about that, but it is a World War II story. So like. Get used to it. It's Nazis in a Disney movie. And uh, they're used more like Indiana Jones Nazis. Where like they're a serious threat. But they're not. They're not as horrible as we later learn that they are. If you know your history. Uh, the only real issue I, I honestly had about this movie is two things. One, I thought. For the most part the kids were okay. But I thought uh, the oldest play the oldest Charles was like a super annoying I I I did not like him at all and I kind of felt like the movie itself kind of quit on him like halfway through uh secondly the songs aren't as good as like Mary Poppins and it's Sherman Brothers and it's sad to say that uh there are two there's the ocean song and there's uh Portobello Road uh which is apparently a lot shorter in the original and I got the uh extended cut which like is pretty much about 12 15 minutes long uh which isn't bad except it just goes on the dancing goes on too long uh for me but i loved uh, the ocean i love the animation i thought the animation was great i thought that character of the lion king literally the lion king uh was a very funny character something different from prince john if you grew up with the disney robin hood like i did uh it's it's a very different kind of uh uh, Lion King, and I'll, I'll keep saying that because it's fun. Um, and another weird thing is that uh, Roddy McDowell, who most know from the original Planet of the Apes, plays like the vicar character, who I want to say is in love with like Miss Price, or he's like uh, trying to catch like magic going on. I actually thought he would end up being like one of the Nazis, like he's like. Uh, a secret agent like hidden in plain sight or something like that. They never went there, so I don't know if that was the original intent or not. But he just like drops out of the movie like after like the first hour. And I don't recall if he came back for the third act. Uh, and I actually do like uh, the closure uh, where uh, Professor Brown and Miss Price end up. I thought that was an interesting way to end the, the movie because war goes on. We're in 1940. We still got like four more years of war time to go. So uh, I thought that was like an interesting way to go. It's it's bittersweet, but it works for a happy ending, how that goes. Uh, so yeah, bed knobs and broomsticks. I went in with my Disney lover uh, nostalgia on, just feeling free to remember when I was a kid and seeing something like this. For the first time, I got a feeling I would have liked this as much as Mary Poppins, if not more. Because uh, as, as good as Mary Poppins is, I kind of felt that uh, this played a little bit more with the characters and allowed a little bit more humor than the epicness that Mary Poppins had. And that's just me. That's just how I grew up, and that's just how I see things. Uh, seeing this from an adult's point of perspective and nostalgia glasses for something I never saw as a kid so uh for the most part yeah I did enjoy Bed Ops and Broomsticks uh don't remake it anytime soon although I doubt you will Disney although somehow you made a Pete's Dragon remake I'm still how that happened I don't know uh but then again this well that goes for my uh never seen Halloween latest entry have a good uh happy Halloween everyone